Hi there, Chef Ben, foraging and cooking Great Britain. So um, today I want to tell you about nettle seeds. So everyone knows um, nettles are edible, or a lot of people know these days. Um, nettles are really good for you. They're high in iron, high in vitamin C, and also have great properties to keep your hair glossy and your skin smooth. Um, not many people do know that the seeds actually have a, a stronger impact of the vitamins and minerals than the leaf itself. So today I'm going to show you how to pick and process the seeds properly. So gloves on. You just want to pick from where the seeds end. What we're gonna do is we're gonna collect a few and we're gonna hang them up just like this. And we're gonna basically let any bugs escape and also let the seeds dry out naturally. And then they can be used in breads, um, in chutneys, in spice mixes. You could even take them Blitz them up and use them in your uh, smoothie mixtures with your kale smoothie, etc. They also have an energizing property. Um, so, probably avoid eating too many of them in the evening, but in the morning, with your protein, kale, protein rich kale smoothie, they'll be perfect to give you a little pep on the way to work. Brought you down here so I can show you one of my favourite wild garnishes. Now this is common vetch, also known as poor man's peas. Now uh, common vetch is easily identified by the lovely purple flower. Also has a very distinct leaf pattern and it also smells like uh, peas. So with these, the flower and the um, and the leaf we use as a garnish because it's probably one of the most beautiful edible things that I've ever used in my uh, time cooking. But also, there is small pea pods. The pea pods are absolutely delicious but they do need cooking first. So this can be done just simply by blanching them in some warm, sorry, some boiling water. And then you're good to go. Hi there, uh, welcome back. Back in the kitchen now. I'm gonna show you a really simple recipe um, to use your nettle seeds and also using nettle greens as well. I'm gonna make you a, a nettle pesto pizza. So, as you can see, I've got 100 grams of flour. I'm just going to basically make a well in the middle. I'm going to add some water. Just basically, just add enough water. You can, also, you can always add more water, you can never take water out. It's going to be roughly 60 grams of water if you want to weigh it out, but I just like eyeballing these things. So to that, I'm going to add a pinch of salt, some quick action yeast, and then your nettle seeds. So probably about two good teaspoons. And then we knead. So just starting from the inside, just bring that in. A bit like making pasta. and the dough will just start coming together quite naturally. Wrap it into a little ball. Put a little bit of olive oil. 
in the bottom of the bowl. And that'll just stop it sticking. And then cover this and leave it to prove. Okay, so uh, the next part of the recipe is the uh, nettle pesto. So here are the nettles. What we're going to do with them is basically quickly blanch them to lock in the colour, that vibrant colour uh, which is high in iron. That's why it's green. So we've got a pan of uh, simmering water, say a pan, it's just a little bit of water on the bottom. So we're going to just pop these nettles in which have been washed in there, pop the lid on and we'll basically just leave them for like three minutes. So these are the blanched nettles. So with these to make the pesto, I've been in the garden to grab some accompanying herbs. And we've got some marjoram. And some oregano. So I just throw as much of the plant in there as possible. This stuff grows like a weed in my back garden, so. Plenty in there. Like a one-to-one -one ratio of herbs and nettles. Okay, now with this, they're gonna go into the blender among with some almonds and some garlic. And it's all gonna be binded together with some extra, some extra virgin rapeseed oil. So now this has got a really lovely herbaceous note to it. Um, kind of notes of lemon, um, marjoram, kind of gives that, that, that freshness. Uh, and nettle will stay there just to give it an extra deep character um, as well. So just making a little quick little bowl like that in your hands and then flatten it down. Okay, and then press down. Both sides. Put one hand in there, one hand flat, and you just turn and move, slowly stretch the pizza. So I've got a hot pan, it's just starting to smoke over here. I'm just gonna slap that like that, get rid of any excess flour, and then pop that in your pan. There we go. Now this is going to get a really lovely colour on the bottom of the pizza. So now we can start putting the pesto on the top. And then just pop it under the grill. As you can see, we've got a lovely base and a lovely crisp pizza on the top there. No cheese, just totally vegan friendly. And then move a couple of those marjoram stalks. And uh, we've got this lovely vetch, which we picked earlier, which um, uh, basically tastes like peas. Uh, poor man's peas, they call it. So we're just going to garnish this up with those. We're just going to take the, the, the most delicate uh, tops of the, uh, of the leaves. They do get a little bit woody, does the, the vetch, um, when the leaves get a little bit bigger. So we're just going to pick the tops. 
Get some of those lovely flowers in there for colour. Now if you aren't a, a vegan, you could do the same recipe, serve it with a lovely ball of fresh mozzarella, uh, and then you'd really be in heaven. We haven't got any mozzarella today, but we have got some more extra virgin rapeseed oil. Stick in.